Hello and welcome to Fearless DIY Music. My name is Tristan Lass and today I'd like to talk about studio microphones. Regardless of your situation, whether you're recording in a bedroom, a closet, a kitchen, a professional studio, your garage, whatever kind of space that you have, if you are capturing live sounds in the room, you're going to need microphones. And what I've discovered over the years is that less is more. For a long time, I would accumulate all sorts of different microphones for very specific applications. And what I discovered is that there are a handful of mics that can do many, many things in many, many different applications. So the, where I'd like to start is by uh, going over some of the microphones that I have and actually all the microphones that I have. There's not that many that I use in the studio anymore, sold off the rest. So let's start with the very fundamentals. Um, if you are going to be miking up guitar cabinets, bass cabinets, anything with a speaker, a loudspeaker in it, uh, the SM57, I mean, there's no shock there. It is a $100 mic, it is a workhorse. You can use it on kick drums, you can use it on guitar cabinets, bass cabinets. You can even use it as a vocal mic. I would say that if you could only afford to buy one microphone or use one microphone in your studio space, the SM57 is it. Or a handful of them that you can just move around and use in different applications. You could even record an entire live band using 57s on a drum kit the bass cabinet, the guitar cabinet, and vocals. It is <clears throat> the de facto workhorse of any studio, regardless of size, scope, and uh, whether or not it's professional, amateur, whatever. So the SM57, that is a must. If I were to pick just two types of microphones to have, it would be a 57, and then I would get a good phantom-powered condenser mic. I have a Rode NT1. Uh, the specs on that, it's basically a tight cardioid pattern condenser mic. It is right here. It is what I'm speaking into now, and it is also ultra low noise. These retail for about 250 bucks. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail on this particular mic. I did it in another video. Check that video out. Um, I'll link it at the end of this one. So anyway, a really good condenser mic. That you can use to record your voice primarily, but also in a pinch, you can use this type of microphone to record your acoustic guitar or acoustic instruments in general, or use it with your 57, there's your two mics, and you can, you can record pretty much anything in a very adequate way, if not a perfectly acceptable way. Um, let me get my notes here. All right, so we kind of covered vocals and cabinets. There are some of you who are watching this video that may be recording a drum kit. If you're recording a drum kit on a regular basis, you're going to have to up your microphone game a little bit. You could use all 57s and then throw your condenser mic up as kind of like a room mic or try to use it as an overhead. I would strongly recommend getting a matched pair of uh, condenser mics for an overhead and splurging on getting a proper kick drum mic. Uh, let's talk about overheads for a minute. Once again, I use Rode NT5s, a matched pair. Uh, excellent, excellent microphones. If you were to go to the matched pair, uh, let's see here, they cost, this, this would be your biggest expense if you're gonna go ahead and splurge. Uh, a set of those costs $450. They are a cardioid polar pattern, detailed wide frequency response microphone, set of microphones. They come in a matched pair. Um, I use a stereo bar sometimes to keep them mounted perfectly for recording acoustic guitars with one on the neck, one on the sound hole. When you're doing a drum kit, you can have it up above and you can also use that uh, stereo bar on a single mic stand to do you know x pattern y pattern whatever you want to do and there you go so at that point with those overhead mics or that matched pair you can cover pretty much any acoustic instrument you can think of you've got a great set of room mics 
Um, great for overhead drums and for gang vocals. Like, let's say you're trying to record a choir or you want to have all the members of your group sing at the same time. NT5s or a match set of uh, those uh, small condensers is a great way to go. And then I mentioned before, or along with that, if you're doing drum kits, it doesn't hurt if you can spend the extra money to go ahead and get a dedicated kick drum mic. I use an AKG uh, 112. Let's see here. Uh, though uh, it's the D112, those retail a little over $200. Uh, they are an excellent microphone for just jamming right, you know, you can put it in front of the of the head, you can put it into the drum itself. I've used them pretty, I've used mine pretty much any way that you can imagine to capture a good kick drum sound. And to kind of recap, if you're doing an acoustic drum kit, if you have a match set of overheads, a good 57 on your snare, and a D112 on your kick drum, you really don't need anything else because the overheads will capture your toms and your cymbals just fine. And then you'll have some isolation on your snare and your kick so you can boost those frequencies in the mix. Um, for those of you who are not going to be doing live band recording or acoustic drum recording whatsoever, you really don't need a kick drum mic and the overheads may be optional. Unless you're doing a lot of really nice acoustic guitar work, then I would still keep the match pair of small condensers in the arsenal, even though they're the most expensive. Um, what other microphones do I have currently? I use an AKG C1000S. That is another condenser mic that you could use for vocals or as an overhead. I currently use it out in the shop where you see most of my videos are shot. That is just my overall microphone for all of my videography. It picks up my guitar cabinets in the room great. It picks up my voice great. Uh, it is a good all-purpose microphone. I would not personally use it as a dedicated vocal mic if I already had, you know, what since I already have an NT1, having the C1000 is just another option for me. Um, it is completely unnecessary though if you have this and you're not needing multiple vocal mics or multiple overhead microphones. Uh, if you're not in that situation, you don't need it. I find that it's very nice to be able to have a dedicated microphone here and in my shop since I am shooting videos in two different places. It's really vital for me to have all this stuff just plugged in and ready to go. Um, it's a great microphone though, the C1000 AKG. I, I just love it as an all-purpose mic. For a while, I used it as a single overhead on drum kit uh, on drum kit setups when I only could use three microphones. And it works great as a single overhead for drum kits and also for the gang vocals and other things like, you know, that you would just mic in an open room with, you know, lots of ambience. And then, let's see here. There's the Humble SM58. I consider that more of a live performance microphone or, you know, your rehearsal space. Throw a couple of those up to, for, for your vocal mics. They can be of use in a studio. I very rarely use an SM58 under any circumstances, but they're worth mentioning because they're only 100 bucks. And some people feel a little weird. Like, let's say you can only spend $100 on a microphone and you're looking at the 57 and the 58, and you're thinking, oh, I don't really want to sing into that 57 or just feel weird about it. Maybe a 58 is a good option for you. You can certainly throw those in front of cabinets and stuff as well. I just find that they don't have quite the utility that uh, demands actually having to have one unless you need it for live performance or for rehearsing, or if you just have you know, a fair number of other microphones already and you just want to add it into the mix. I wouldn't spend my dollars there though. I'd, I'd buy the 57 for sure. And then the only other microphone that I have held on to is another AKG, no surprise there. I'm talking a lot about Shure, AKGs, and Rhodes, I think are all excellent microphones for the money. I have a, a beat up old AKG SM58 clone. Now that mic's a little different. 
it adds a lot of character to my voice. It just kind of works for me. And I have always kept it because sometimes if I'm not capturing the vocal sound I want through this, or if I want to have kind of a grittier live sound to a vocal track, I'll go to that AKG and use it. And so there's no sin also in having a collection of old cheap microphones that you've picked up along the way. Hang on to those. You never know when they might be really applicable to your situation. And add, you know, like I said, it's I call it a character mic. I've purged a lot of microphones. I've always held on to that one because when I track with it, I'm always super happy with the results. So as a kind of recap here, you know, if you can only afford one and you don't have hardly any money, it's a 57. You add in a $250 condenser mic, you're up to 350 bucks. And most people could probably stop right there with what they actually need. If you're moving into more applications like the drums and all those sorts of things, um, and you're recording live sessions with multiple players, more 57s, add in the overhead matched pair. Um, if you're doing a lot of acoustic guitar work, I would strongly urge getting the matched pair as well. It is the most expensive uh, mic that you'll probably end, set of mics that you'll end up buying. But the results that you get from any match pair set will be so nice, and you'll be so glad that you did it. Anyway, so the total dollar value, I keep, I'll pick up the paper again. Uh, so let me just add this up real quick in my head. So I, my entire microphone arsenal is sitting under fifteen hundred dollars. Um. That is a considerable amount of money, but considering that I also have about eight very good microphones for that overall dollar amount, um, why spend more than that? Uh, there are people who would say, oh, you know, go ahead, you should, you, where's the ribbon mic? Or where are all these, you know, like, like Neumann clones or whatever you want to, whatever, you know, higher end boutique things. Uh, most of us can't afford that stuff. And... What I found is that these are all great workhorse mics that I've had for a long time. I've never had to spend that much money on them. You know, my mic locker, like I said, clocks in about 1500 bucks. I think that that I could even, if I wanted to, I could get away with fewer mics uh, than I have. I used to have a lot more. And like I said, I found that the boutique and high-end things did not necessarily give me a performance that was much greater than what I can get out of these mics. So anyway, that's just the thumbnail. I'm just talking about, you know, what to think about when you're, you know, going to buy a microphone, what your application is, uh, how many do you plan on having long term, how many do you plan on having overall. Uh, there's no need to for me to go beyond this, and I can't imagine that most people would need to go beyond the array of microphones that I've gone through today here in my own studio. Anyway, I've really been appreciating the comments. Uh, please keep them coming. Maybe uh, down in the comments you can drop what microphones I left out or that you think are good alternatives. Let's uh, keep it to budget stuff though. I don't want to be talking about high-end boutique things on this channel very often. We will upon occasion, but not yet. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button, and I look forward to bringing you more content soon. Take care.